This is my promise to you is hopefully bring clarity and understanding around the three main principles that I see in social media. So this will be the attention economy and exactly what is the attention economy. Market movements and what's happening on social media, what's happening on the internet in this attention economy. And the last thing is branding and content. How can you improve your branding and content? Uh, so this is my promise. Hopefully we're gonna be able to make it through everything. Is there anything else? No, we're gonna jump into it. I'm super excited. Oh, I did make this so if you're on LinkedIn, if you're on Facebook, if you're on Instagram, if you're on YouTube, if you're doing emails, this should apply across the board. And so I've made this to be digestible regardless of your format, regardless of your platform. So everybody can find that week worth of value. We've got our three pillars. We're gonna revisit this slide a lot. So again, don't lose sleep if you're not getting everything right away. Number one, we wanna go over the attention economy. And so in the attention economy, I wanna introduce and talk to you guys a little bit about why this matters so much. And I also wanna talk, what is your obligation to this marketplace and how do we exactly capture the attention in the attention economy? For those of you who haven't figured out what the attention economy means, it just means whoever has the attention has the control. Whoever has the eyeballs, has the focus of the people, controls the economy, right? For a long time, historically, it was governments and churches that chose the narrative. They chose what story that people believed in. And how do you control the narrative? Well, you control the attention. Uh, recently, since the internet came out, the dot-com era, it's just changed the game forever. Historically, everything has changed since dot-com, then social media, then AI. Uh, in 2019, $2.1 trillion in transactions was done over the internet. If that isn't revolutionary and just game changing, I don't know what is. Uh, the economy, the attention economy is now decentralized. You can, everybody here can compete in the attention economy. You no longer have to be a Catholic church or a US government to compete for the narrative. Um, another great statistic that Pritchett mentioned in his presentation is over 3 billion people are active on Facebook every 30 days. So about half of the world population uses social media. So if you don't think that your marketplace is on there, if you don't think you can get clients on social media, I hate to break it to you, you're probably wrong. Um, and then the other big thing about this is someone selling, selling online. Someone's using social media to sell the same thing you are. And so if you're not talking about your thing on social media, somebody else is. If you're not doing it well on social media or email or anything online, if you're not selling, someone else is. The old way of business, word of mouth, brick and mortars is great, but now you can compete on a global marketplace. You can compete instantaneously with other people. And here's the downside of that, is there are people taking advantage of this instantaneous global marketplace, selling way, excuse my language, way shittier versions of the exact same thing that you sell. That's tragic, that's heartbreaking, that someone is scamming your ideal clients. Someone is ruining the lives of the people that you wanna work with. So you have an obligation to get, the, to get that sale, to promote on this marketplace. You have an obligation to win on the online attention economy. That's your obligation. Last thing on the attention economy. I gotta slow down, I'm gonna pass out. <sighs> okay, last thing about the attention economy is capturing attention. Like, okay, we know this exists, all these trillions of dollars, all these people, okay, but how do I actually do that, right? Like, how do I get eyeballs? And that's what the rest of this presentation is about, spoiler alert. Uh, but in the world of online business, best known will always be best. So the kid with the Lamborghini that's spending every single dollar he makes on ads is always going to be the brick and mortar who spent their whole life building the best product, but nobody knows about them. So the best known will beat the best. And so either you capture someone's attention directly, talking about what you do, talking exactly how it can help them, or you can capture someone's attention indirectly by highlighting their desires or their insecurities. And so this is talking about the results, the outcomes of something, right? So the direct way to capture attention is like, hey, my name is Harrison Coley, I do social media marketing, I can do A, B, and C for your business. Indirectly would be, hey, I work online and I drive a Lamborghini, you see the Lamborghini, you go, I wanna know what he does, right? I don't actually drive a Lamborghini, I drive a Nissan. <laughs> um, so are we, is everybody following this so far? A, a attention economy, you capture either directly or indirectly through talking exactly about your thing or talking about the results, the outcomes of either doing the thing or not doing the thing. On board, cool, I'm seeing some head nods. Let's keep going. So 
That's the attention economy. Just some bullet points, some notes. If you're not taking notes, here's the notes that you should be taking. Uh, the business marketplace has changed forever. Everything's online now, everything is globalized. We can deliver products and services instantly over the internet, and we have extremely high leverage. Like on social media, I can say one thing and speak to a million people instead of just saying one thing in a room like this and speaking to 30, right? So the internet changed the game. If you haven't changed with it, time to adapt. Social media is just the evolution of the internet, so I'm gonna use those interchangeably throughout this. Um, if you aren't selling on social media, the internet, email, someone else is, and someone else is selling the same thing that you're selling, but probably for more money and with worse deliverables. And last thing is we wanna speak directly into someone's interests or indirectly through the outcomes of whatever they're looking at. There's the attention economy, now, nope, ah. now we're gonna go over to market movements. I'm moving quick today, okay. We're good on time, I'm happy to hear that. Uh, we're gonna go over some things in the market movements. We're gonna go over relevance, which is understanding your audience. We're gonna go over trust issues in the marketplace, talking about the scammer thing, really important. We go over trust issues. And the last thing that we're gonna go over is our attention spans. So the first thing I wanna talk about is relevance, understanding your audience. Craig said this at the very beginning. Allison as a therapist mentioned a little bit about this earlier as well. If you don't know who you're talking to, it does not matter what you say. Let me say that louder for the people in the back. If you do not know who you're talking to, it does not matter what you say. So the most, and Pritchett emphasized this over and over and over and over again through his presentation. It's essential that we know who we're talking to. A good friend of mine, his name is Majid. He's a public speaker. He's a public speaker for holistic health coaches that want to speak on stage. And he doesn't just think, oh, I work with holistic health coaches. He works with Sandy. And Sandy's a vegan. And Sandy attends yoga class every Monday at 3 p.m. Craig did the same exercise, right? You want to know exactly who you're talking to. Even if that isn't all of your clients, you want to think about who's the ideal person? Who do I want to work with more than anybody else in this world? What do they look like? What do they eat? What do they watch? When do they go to bed? When do they get up in the morning? Kids, no kids, et cetera, et cetera. So be relevant. And the only way to be relevant is to know who you're talking to, right? Does that make sense? It should, hopefully. Uh, and when we're relevant, when we know who we're talking to, we become recognizable, right? If I talk to you over and over and over, if I had a week and every single day I said the same thing, you'd recognize me. You'd be like, oh, that's that guy that does social media, hopefully. And so you wanna be consistent with your message. You wanna be consistently talking about the same things to the same people. If I got up here and I was like, the earth is flat, and then I went on a rant about economics, you guys would be like, who is this guy? You wouldn't recognize me. You'd be like, oh! So we wanna create familiarity and recognition. Only way to do that is know who we're talking to. Make sense? We're good? Bam. Okay, trust issues in the marketplace. This is super understated and something we need to address. All of you guys have experienced this, whether you recognize it or not. The marketplace, and especially since the dawn of the internet, it's been overrun by unlicensed gurus and get-rich-quick gurus, or unlicensed therapists and get-rich-quick gurus. Uh, and this has been snake oil salesmen back in the day, people promising life-changing results and not delivering anything at all. Uh, so this has always been a thing. There's always been people trying to take your money and not give you anything in return. What does that create? That creates social trauma. Everybody's like, ooh, who are you? Stay away from me. Um, and so we're working against the social trauma. We're working against a negative bias, a inclination to not trust people. So it's really, really, really important that we trust people. And how do we do that? We lead with our best foot. Three different ways we can do this. We can use social proof. We can say, hey, I do this thing. Chad used my services, he got great results. Allison used my services, he got great, she got great results. Daniel, David, these are all my clients. I've got 5,000 clients and they're all amazing. Here's my background. And then people are like, okay, I should probably listen. Number two, consistency. Pritchett emphasized this in his presentation. I've been doing the same thing since 2017. And you're like, okay, he might be young, but he's got six years of experience clearly knows what he's doing. He's talking about the same thing. He's emphasizing the same points. You start to trust and believe what he's saying the longer you listen, right? So we wanna be consistent. Number three thing on trust issues, don't lie. 
don't lie. It's really easy on the internet, right? You just see a list of names. You don't know them. You don't know what they look like. Do you really care? Are they just a dollar sign? Is it just a lead? Don't lie. Um, and this is huge for me of like, could I introduce myself on an email as Sarah, the sexy red dress? Yes, but I'm not Sarah. Would it help my business? Sure. But then where do I draw that line? Right, okay. Am I Sarah? How long have I been in business? Who are my clients? Does that make sense? Like it's really easy online to not show receipts. And so it's really easy to do this. I'm gonna share a quick little story because I'm doing good on time. When I was 18 years old, I was doing drop shipping. It's like a canon event for our generation. It was like, I'm gonna be a 16 year old millionaire selling Chinese products. Um, <laughs> it's a thing. And so my thing was easy piece and it got no sales. I had no business. I, was, I had no business doing business. Didn't know what I was doing. I come across this guy on Instagram. He's 21. He's in Dubai. He's in the Maldives. He's at the Four Seasons. He's driving the rented Lamborghini that I think is his. And he's like, I know how to make money online. And I'm like, word. I'm a 17 year old kid. Obviously very sophisticated, very educated in this marketplace. He's like, hey, buy my program, and I'll help you make more money on your dropshipping store. So what does the 17-year-old kid with years of life experience do? Whole life savings. I was going to college. Now I'm not. I'm going to be a dropshipper. So a couple grand. And 17-year-old kid. I don't have a car, no college. It's pretty great. So I wait a couple of minutes, no email. The guy on the phone, okay, great. We're gonna send you some material. You should get a confirmation. Super excited to work with you. A day goes by, nothing happens. A week goes by, still haven't heard. A month, nothing. To this day, that was four or five years ago. Still haven't heard from his team. Couldn't even tell you his name anymore. And so what do I do? I'm an 18, 17 turning 18 year old kid. Now I have no money, no dreams, crushed, I'm down, alone, down and out. Started a photography business, that led into this, and this is how I'm taking revenge on these online gurus as I'm becoming one myself. I've become the thing I hate. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> uh, hopefully I do it better than them. Um, so this is really, really, really important, and it's very much personal to me. It's like, hey, let's not just talk shit on the internet, please, pretty please. Uh, it's becoming where we live. It's becoming where we interact and connect with new people. So let's actually be honest about who we are. So those are the movements in the market. Oh, one more. Ah, we've got attention spans. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys have noticed, but some of you will pull out your phone and check your phone in the middle of someone else talking. Like you're having a one-on-one -on -one conversation. I'm like, hey, Naomi, how's your day? Oh, uh-huh, uh -huh, yeah, okay, cool. Our attention span is less than a goldfish. And that was in 2012, Microsoft did a study. And they're like, whoa, humans suck at focus. Like, suck at focus. Um, so we have really short attention spans, and it's worse now than it was a year ago, and it's worse a year ago than it was in the 80s. The marketplace no longer is interested in slow, boring content. I have a typo, that's gonna kill me. Wow, okay, I'm so sorry, please forgive me. Um, so we just have like literally two to three seconds to capture someone's attention. We don't have a lot of time to say, hey, this is what I do, you should listen. And so we need to have up-to-date language, we need to have a style, and we need to have engaging content. If we don't have engaging content, if we don't use the language the people that we're selling to use, if we're not using a style that engages with them, they won't listen. And this is the whole thing, it doesn't matter if your email is perfect, if your subject line sucks. If they don't even open the email, why spend all your time on the copy, right? And so we need to have super engaging content because if we don't, it doesn't matter how good you are. It doesn't matter how honest you are. So again, market, movement, market movements, relevance, know your audience or it doesn't matter. Trust issues, don't lie, don't lie. And attention spans, keep it catchy. You know, know what they're looking at, know what's engaging them. 
Like my generation now doesn't just watch someone talk about something, they watch someone talk about something while someone else plays subway surfers. Have you guys seen those videos? It's, it's out of this world. It's like you're watching someone play a video game while someone else is talking because we can't focus on just one thing. It's kind of scary. Um, how's everybody feeling? We feel good? Making sense? Allison, do you have anything to add on knowing your audience and being able to speak to that? I think also knowing the things they don't say out loud. That's a really powerful tool. Yes. The like insecurities and deep down dreams. It's like that feels so unbelievably amazing. And I wish I could do that, but I don't know if I could. So I'm not even going to talk about it. Glow. I just realized why it is that those IG reels show somebody playing subway surfers. Mm -hmm. Like it yeah. just hit me. I've been sitting yes. here watching these reels where, where people are talking, and I'm watching this stupid video game playing, and yeah. I'm realizing I'm consuming all the content because I watched it. And it's so engaging. And it's genius. Yes, it scratches an itch in your brain, like this lizard brain we all have, and you're just like, eh, watching this piece of content. I don't have that look on my face when I'm that. <laughs> yes. It's like, do you guys know the head scratcher things, like those, those weird wires? That's what the internet does to your brain. Okay, movements in the marketplace. So now we've gone over the attention economy and why you need to sell something, AKA to beat someone else to the marketplace. And we're not going back to the old way of business, so catch up. Market movements, know who you're talking to, don't lie, and build trust. Another great way to build trust, just while we're here, social proof. I said that, but social proof. Uh, don't lie and talk about all the things you've done. Last thing, attention spans. It's super short, so cater to that. Uh, again, it, but if you sell to like, let's say your audience is 35 to 45 year old school ASP coordinators, they're gonna have a much longer attention span than if your audience is a 22 year old entrepreneur, right? Like my audience is like subway surfers and Minecraft videos and TikToks and 15 second bombs. Your audience might be a 10 minute sales letter, right? So understand your marketplace's attention span, who they are, their desires and insecurities. The last thing we're going to go over is your branding and content. Before we do, I'm going to just take a quick breathe, a breath before I pass out. Questions while we're here, we'll just do a little, little stopping spot. Naomi. Both of you guys have gotten curious about subway surfers. Let's go over that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a video game on your phone where you're a little kid running from the police and you have to jump between three different railroad tracks to avoid the trains coming at you. Yeah, so there, it's these videos, right, on Instagram videos that split screen, and the top half is an individual who's talking and has a message. And so for me, my feed is like the people, it's, it's this room right here. I want to talk mm. to the people in this room with our marketing. And so the top part is learning, is, is somebody speaking, right? And that's a 30 second lesson. On the bottom, it's this video game of somebody jumping from rail to rail, driving a car or running. And I'm sitting here intrigued by this imagery, but I'm listening to the message that's being given to me. And then I share it because it's like, wow, that's a really good nugget that one of my clients could listen to. Hey, here, here's a message. Didn't even think of the fact that there's a video game in half of it. Yep. It's the content that I can, they forced me to consume. And I, and I, when I saw it, I just thought, oh, it's just some entertainment thing. It's just something so that, you know, but now I realize it's capturing my ADHD brain's attention. Yes. And that's why they're including the real. It's a retention tactic. Yep. And so it's, it's you know. And have you seen the ones that has the, the guy's voice, but it's the same voice on all of them? And it's like five things you didn't know. And it's got yeah. all these cool video, weird video things. And, you're, and I'm like, oh, that's the weirdest visual thing I've ever seen. Yes. And he's saying these things, and then after the fifth one, he says, you know, click follow in order to hear more, you know, yes. like weird things. So it's just all subliminal and like weird mm -hmm. stuff. You don't even know what, uh, you know. Yeah, you're, you're spot on. And this is back in a lot of people's days, not my days, but my dad's days. Uh, AV cables, audio visual, right? And so we have audio, and we got video. 
right? And so we want to capture someone's audio attention by talking or doing something interesting. Five things you didn't know. Here's a secret I found out after ABC, whatever it is. We're capturing what they're listening to. And then we've got a video game or a video made by some dude on hallucinogenics, whatever it is, to capture what they're looking at. And, or you just keep the video engaging. This will be, if you're looking at social media content, podcasts, YouTube videos, you'll notice how when someone's talking on a podcast, longer format, they'll slowly zoom in on him. And then they'll pop back out. And then they'll zoom in and pop back out. And that's because we want to just keep their visual attention engaged, right? Because we're so distracted. Go for it. Mm. What should we think of when coming up with like the first three, five seconds of the video? Yeah. Uh, we'd love to kind of hear your insights on that. Amazing. Okay. And I've got some great stuff on hooks awesome. I'd love to share. Um, just while we share a few things, something that worked really great for a buddy of ours, uh, his name is Thor. Um, yeah, Thor's really cool. Great guy. He created a hook. And so he hasn't been on Instagram for a while. He built up a brand of like, let's say 60,000 followers, I think is where he was at. And he put out this video and he's like, you'll never look at the news again after watching this. And so people are like, well, what am I going to watch? What's going to change how I look at the news? What's going on? And then he put this video and it got 24 million views. No momentum, like just boom, viral. And so he's not posting a lot. He's not gaining momentum. He just drops this and it bomb, like just boom. And now if you go to his Instagram, he's got, uh, you'll never look at social media the same after watching this. You'll never look at porn the same after watching this. You'll never look at uh, life advice after, you know? And so it's like, oh, like, huh. Um, the essence of that, we're gonna cover this in branding and content, is curiosity, right? Five things you didn't know. I don't even care what they are. I just wanna know what I don't know, right? We don't know what we don't know, and we don't know, wait, anyways. Um, it, I think the big thing is, is like, you don't know what you don't know. And then someone says, you'll never look at news the same way. And now you know that you don't know. And now you're like, wait, what do I not know? And now I know that I don't know. So tell me, please. Um, we'll talk about that in a second. Are we, everybody feeling good? Attention economy, relevance, market movements, everybody's good? Cool. Branding and content, let's rock and roll. Let's rock and roll. Three things we're gonna go over. There's kind of a theme here. Uh, your presentation, AKA your brand, AKA your reputation online. Number two, urgency, creating urgency. Number three, content formats, different styles of content. We got three. Number one, presentation. This is where we're gonna talk about curiosity. At the end of the day, your brand, your online reputation, your presentation online, here's a bond that a lot of you are not going to want to hear. So you're going to go, yeah, those guys are stupid, but this is for you. Nobody listens to a nobody. Let me say that again. Nobody listens to a nobody. Are you a somebody to the people that you want to sell to? Are you someone they look up to? Are you someone that they believe in? Are you someone that they trust? Right? This is huge. I was talking to George on the intermission. And he sells, to, he sells a program for driving schools, a driving school program, uh, or a driving program like to kids that want to get their license. And he sells it through a school, right? So he gets the school to promote it to the students. And so he has to get the school to trust him. So how can he do that? He can say, I've helped 1,500 schools do over $2.5 million in private funding for the school. He's now a somebody. The school that's like, how do we pay for uniforms? How do we get funding to pay for the janitor? We're out of budget. He goes, I've helped a thousand schools do an extra $2 million in, in private funding for the school and pay for those school uniforms. He's a somebody. They go, oh my God, help me. What are you doing? Please help. So we want to put our best foot forward. We need to lead with what have we done? What are we good at? This is super important. Like, If you get nothing else from this presentation, get this. Be a hero, to be the knight in shining armor, the hero to the person that you're selling to. They have to trust you. They have to know who you are. They have to care. So we put our best foot forward. We give our best stuff away for free, and we flex our success. I know a lot of you are very humble people, and a lot of you are people that are like, well, I don't need to talk about that. Like, Gavin, I want to hear about the transformations you've had doing mindsets. Yes. You know, it's like, you're humble about it. You're like, oh yeah, I do this thing. And it's like, but I meet, a million guys in Tulum that say, I'm a mindset coach. 
And it's like they've never done anything. And I, I can just feel from our conversations that you're different. So I need to know why. Show me what success do you have. And then when the survey goes out and Craig's survey is like, why didn't you buy Gavin's thing? It isn't, I didn't know who Gavin was. It isn't, I didn't trust Gavin. It's, oh, that wasn't it at all. Go up. Yes. Right? Like yes. I, I have so many testimonials and success stories I have, and I, I don't, I, I, it makes me uncomfortable. Yes. Possibly living in belief. Possibly living in belief. Yes. Yeah. And so I would love your insight as to how can you do that in a way that is still like showing humility and that you're a genuine person? Like, how would you do that? Yeah, 100%. I want to get your input on this, Corby, uh, indirectly. Okay. So instead of saying, hey, this is Joey, and this is Craig, and this is Bob, and this is J Jeanette, and whatever, instead of being like, in your face, in your face, in your face, just allow them to be there. And make, the, make your audience aware of who they are. Uh, a good friend of mine who went from zero to $200,000 a month with an 80% profit margin in seven months, just 200K, seven month business, 80% profit margin. What he does is on his YouTube channel, he does 30 to hour long, 30 minute to hour long interviews of the client success stories. And so he's just like, well, what did you do? How did you find the program? What was the most valuable to you? What was the biggest change you made? How did you add that to your top line? And so then he's not like in your face with it. He's just saying, hey, I just did this video if you want to check it out. It's almost like a podcast. And then the person's talking about it instead of being... Yes, and so he's inviting them on, and he's saying, hey, let's talk about your success. What happened? How long you been in business? What do you sell? What changed? Where were you at? What was the ceiling? How did you break through the bottleneck, right? And so you can flex your success indirectly. Now, Corby. Okay, uh, to help you out and everybody else here, do you know as I say this, do you feel like you have a good Mm. So what you do is you can say, listen closely to this, what you can tell people what to do for free. Mm. But if they want to know how, that's going to be a fee. So anyway, right? Just after that, can you say how their life is different after? But you gotta make sure the story matches. You can't say, well, you know, Jessica was really sad and lonely and after going through her before she came to get the fan. After she came out program, she got on my exercise all the blind and go, and now Yes. You just got to make the story match. And then, so here's the secret what they do at the church testimony. They do the before, during, after. Listen closely to this part. Then the after, after. Yes. Mm. Yes. Mm. And if you do that over and over again, you're going to get rich. Yes. Spot on. Uh, another way to say this, and Craig, I'm, my apologies for going over time. Uh, do I have a couple more minutes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. Uh, another way to say exactly what he just said is Pain Island, where they were. Pleasure Island, where they are now. You're the boat. And we just want to increase the distance. We want to say, hey, you're on Pain Island. Here's what happens if you stay there. You're suffering. Highlight their suffering. It's like, I have a broken leg and I don't even realize it. You got to remind me. Dude, you're going to bleed out. You'll never walk the same. And I go, oh my God, I have a broken leg. How do I fix it? And you go, well, lucky for you, there is a way to fix that. You can actually be back to running. You can go back to athletics, and here's how. And then they'll give you the money. That's also how you create curiosity, is you create this realization in your prospect's mind that they're actually miserable, and they didn't even realize it. And there's actually a way better life for them, and they didn't even know. And then they go, well, how the do I get there? Show me how. Curiosity. Curiosity killed the cat. Curiosity closes deals. Everybody likes to be curious. We need to create a sense of curiosity. We want to be mysterious. We want to create suspense. We want to like, just tease people a little bit. It's like something I love doing on my social media is I'll put up a story. Can't wait for you to see this. 
working on something really special. Taylor Swift is really good at this. Yes. And so people are excited to experience it, whatever it is. All right? It's like you're talking to the right people, so you're relevant, you're using the right language, and then you're mysterious. So the people that you want to listen are already listening. And they're going, oh, I have the best thing for you. And they're like, what is it? Give it to me now. Curiosity. That was a weird voice. I'm sorry. All right. Next thing on branding and content, urgency. This has been kind of an underlying theme. If what you're doing isn't urgent, make it urgent. You have to satisfy an immediate need. The example of the school, the driving school program that gives funding to the actual school, right? Well, you might have enough money for jerseys right now, but what about in six months? What about in a year? Okay, so are you gonna wait until you're out of money to raise new money? Are you gonna wait until you need to do my program to make more funding before you just sign up? Right? We need to create urgency. We need to say, hey, if you don't do it now, you're screwed. We need to highlight the cost of an urgency. So a lot of people, when they're trying to create urgency, they go forward with it. Right? They're like, well, here's all the things you get when you do the thing. Right? It's like, if you do it, and if you do it now, here's all the benefits. You're going to be stronger. You're going to look better. Girls are going to like you more. I'm talking about the gym. Um, but here's the other side of that is the cost of an action. So ROI, the return on investment, if you do something. People can create urgency that way, or we can create urgency with the cost of an action. If you don't go to the gym, you're going to get fatter, you're going to get more insecure, you're going to hate your life even more, you're going to be more mentally clouded, your sleep's going to be worse, you're going to eat the wrong food, you're going to spend way more money, you're going to be way less organized, your life is going to suck. And now I'm like, where's the gym? Cost of an action. We need to highlight that. We need to get people inspired to do something, not because of everything they'll gain, but because of everything they'll lose if they don't. People are wired to try to preserve what they have more than get new things. And so if we can highlight the cost of an action, what they lose if they don't do something, they'll be way more invested than if we highlight what they have to gain. It could be, hey, you can either make $100 or lose $100. You're going to be way more inclined to keep your hundred dollars than try to make another. Making sense? Yes. Rock and roll. Your odds of winning will only ever get worse. There is no perfect time. Okay? So now is always going to be better than never. Now is better than never. It's like, okay, I just ate a giant Big Mac. I just binged ate Kit Kats in my room last night. Not me. <laughs> When's the best time to go to the gym? Tomorrow? In a week? How about a month from now? Am I going to be thinking about it in a month from now? A year from now? 10 years from now? No, I'm going to have more stuff to do. I'm going to be busier. Right? This actually just happened with Natasha. I meet Natasha, and Natasha's like, we should talk. And I'm like, OK, I'll get you my phone number later today. Let's come back later today and talk about this. And then I'm like, let me go get my phone right now. I'll be right back. Stay here. And I got her number. What happens if I wait? She's gone. She's no longer in the room. How would I get her number? Now is better than never. So if you don't do it now, you never will. Hardwire that in your brain. Put that in all of your messaging. It's like, hey, when's the best time to get your best morning, uh, the perfect morning formula? Right now. And when's the best day to change your behavior, to reroute your diet, whatever it is, now, not later. Sorry, I'm obsessed with now, not later, because I used to be a huge procrastinator. And so I just move up the deadline, or I create something I'll lose. Last thing I want to talk about today, because we're over time, and my apologies for taking up your time, content formats. So there's two different types of content formats. We have short format content, long format content. The difference is how long does it take for someone to digest the material correctly? A TikTok, an Instagram reel, 15 to 30 seconds, 60 seconds at max, short format. A YouTube video, a VSL, a presentation like the one I'm giving today, long format. What's a VSL? Virtual sales letter. So it's a 10 minute video saying, hey, this is who I am, this is what I do, these are my results, this is what happens if you don't work with me, buy my stuff. VSLs are great. So. The difference between short format and long format, people usually think it's like, oh, it's one's text, one's video. Oh, one's on this platform, one's on that platform. No, it's time to consume. And then there's some nuance, and those are the bullet points. 
and we'll go over those. Uh, but really the essence is, is I could have a short format text, which is like an SMS, or an SMS text, right? It's like, boom. Or I could have an email. Boom, 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 boom. Okay? Time to consume. That's the essence. Making sense? So help? Yeah, so quick question. Yes. Um, Yes. We're watching more of the short form stuff, right? But we're looking for TikToks and whatever yes. sorts. So, does that, if you only did that, does that still build your trust and drive sales, or no, is the long form still necessary? So, Hale, that is a freaking amazing question. I'm going to answer with an analogy, if that's okay with you. The what? An analogy. Oh, yeah. Okay. A fishing hook versus a fishing rod, right? Short format piece of content, you catch someone, it's the bait, it's the hook, it's what you capture their attention with. How do you build the, build the trust? How do you drive, build the relationship, establish trust and engage them? Long format, it takes a while to reel in the fish. It's like half a second for them to bite on the hook. It's like, oh, got him, now I gotta reel them in. And so you can reel them in with a conversation. You can reel them in with a 90 minute presentation. You can reel them in with a book or a worksheet. A lead magnet, right? A lead magnet, a worksheet, a webinar, all of these things are just increasing the time that they've spent investing in you. It's increasing the amount of focus they have on you as an individual. So short format, we're doing the nuggets, right? We're teasing something, hey, I'm working on this thing. We're dropping a nugget. Here's some advice. Here's a little nugget, right? So like just this slide, short format is great hooks. They're viral, it's how you build new audience, it's how you engage new people, it's how you remind old people who you are. That's a nugget, right? This whole presentation is long format, okay? So your short format stuff, it's outcome focused, it's a singular thing, whether it's a suspense builder, like you're teasing something, or it's the reveal, the nugget. But these are clips, highlight reels. Post with you, with the car, post of your Stripe bank account, post of you selling the gym, whatever it is, highlight reels, boom, 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 boom. These are great for brand identity and recognition. We're reminding people who we are, we're introducing ourselves to new people, we're presenting ourselves, right? Long format, there's gonna be more research, there's gonna be way more depth. You know, you're gonna be an inch wide and a mile deep in a long format piece of content. We're gonna be deep, we're gonna be personal, people are gonna connect, you're gonna provide way more value. Right, but people are gonna have to mine it themselves. You're having a conversation, you're presenting something. Has anybody here watched like a 20 minute video where they just didn't stop taking notes the whole time? Amazing, okay, I'm seeing some nods, I'm seeing some hands, beautiful. I'm really happy to hear that. Uh, so that's long format, value driven, you're engaged. The other example of a long format would be like a movie, right? It's, edu it's entertaining, not educating. But it's the same thing, you're just engaged. It's a long format piece of content where you benefit the more you focus. Whether it's entertainment benefit, of just like, oh, I'm gonna watch this and it's gonna make my brain go, eh. Or it's like, I'm gonna learn a lot and I better take notes. Great thing about long format is it builds trust, drives sales. Uh, the longer we spend looking at something, the more attention we give to something, the more believable it is. The more we think about it, the more it haunts our dreams. So if we can drive attention and we can increase the amount of attention someone spends with you or your offer, they're just gonna think about you more. More trust, more relationship, more value. That's, a, that's it for the talk. We got presentation, urgency, formats, and branding and content. Remember, nobody listens to a nobody, so be somebody. Now is better than never. Don't wait. Don't wait to sell them. Don't reschedule the call. Highlight the cost of an action. And why do you have to talk to your wife? And there's Sales Dojo. I'd love for you to talk about those objections. Because a lot of people like to wait. It's our favorite thing is to procrastinate, right? So we have to highlight cost of an action. And then the last thing is long format and short format serve two different purposes. So Hale, I want to make sure I answered your question. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. It's the, the nurturing process, right? The really yes. Yes. And so it's like uh, the short format, you can get sales off of short format if there's enough of it. Right, because if, if we post every single day and someone sees it for a month, that's a long format piece of content. They've engaged with you over time. They've spent time watching your stuff. They can convert. If you post one short format piece of content, don't expect sales. Uh, we used to, when the market was less sophisticated, when social media was brand new, right? 
You'd spend like uh, 30 seconds watching an ad, TV ads. Call now, and you'd call in, you buy the thing. And now people are less trusting. Now people are like, can I really believe you off of that single piece of content? If you follow them, if you engage with them, and you spend a month watching them, it's like, yeah, I can believe what he's saying. So leverage your long format and short format strategically. And we can talk more about that. So hopefully, in the last like 35 minutes, we've gone over the attention economy, why it matters, your obligation to the marketplace, and capturing attention. We've gone over market movements, speaking to your audience, knowing who they are, trust issues in the market, and how we have literally no attention span. And last but not least, presentation, aka branding, aka reputation, creating urgency, and the different styles of content. How are we all feeling? <laughs> Woo! OK. That's it. Uh, if you want to get a hold of me, come bother me. Come say hi. What was that? Just talk to me. I'll send them to you. Yeah, you Linda, Linda will get all the slides of everybody up to every, every attendee. I think one of the most important things that Harrison said, and you know, I think everybody's probably got more questions, so Harrison, don't go too far. But one of the most important things was what he said really early on in the presentation that if you are not out there promoting your products and services, all of your prospects, all the people who need, and who may not even know about you, are still out there with the problem and they're buying other stuff. I used to use this little shtick uh, back when I was coaching my first uh, mastermind back in like 2009 or 2010. There'd be people who would be hesitant to email. So this is before social media, and they were hesitant to email, and I would, use, would say to them, because most of them were in the fitness industry, I would say that out there, some lady is crying themselves to sleep at 10 o'clock at night because they work a really crappy job, their boss was mean to them, said something rude and horrible to them. She went home to this husband, who was sick and tired of trying to eat healthy food, and demeaned her and belittled her about, you know, oh, you're on another diet. And then she got the kids to bed after they were screaming, and he's gone to bed, or he's watching football, and she's sitting in front of the computer Googling, and she's got tears in her eyes. And because you don't have your product or service out there, she's buying the pills. And the pills cost three times as much money as your solution. They don't work. And in a month from now, things are going to be worse, all because you are so selfish and you won't put a piece of content out there because you're worried about what somebody's going to say about it. Yes. And that just you know, goes exactly with what Harrison said about the social media stuff. There's people out there dying for your information, whether it is in the real estate investing, you're buying the first home, they're out there, they're buying some you know, course off somebody who's just you know, more promotional, who has less experience, who's not going to be as helpful, and who has horrible customer service, and they're going to have bad experience, and they're never going to you know, build the family wealth that they want because we're kind of holding back. And that's, that's the urgency that I hope everybody, I don't think anybody here is struggling with it too much, but if you are you know, hesitating at, at any time to get the, the promotional content up there, just remember that you're competing with a really bunch of bad options. Yes. And they really need your good options up there. And I think that was maybe missed in all the other stuff that he got into, uh, mm. more interesting and fancier stuff he got into, but that's really the key element of it, is let's, let's get going and we'll build on our uh, successes we Stuff up. Mm. Okay. Good. What would you suggest? Because I think about this a lot um, in terms of getting ideas. Like, you know, is there a specific, maybe even suggest a, a few specific accounts that you think are just doing a fantastic job? Whether they're even in, doesn't even matter what niche market they're in, but who's out there doing a great job on social right now that's really catching fire? that is really doing a good job of not only getting attention, but moving it to whether it's an email list or whether it's to a webinar list or whether it's to a book buying or, or taking mm. action. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm uncomfortable to recommend specific accounts because if you're in an industry completely conflicting and then you start taking their advice, you're gonna set yourself up to fail. Uh, something I do recommend is 20 accounts in your niche that are doing better than you, 20. Because that's going to take time. You're going to have to research. You're going to find new people, people you didn't even know existed. And you're going to go, oh my god, there's so many different things happening in my marketplace that I didn't even realize. Right? If you can't find 20, find 10. If you can't, five, can't find 10, find 5. But find accounts in your marketplace selling either the same thing or selling to the same audience and study them religiously. People doing 